Um, now, you, you had mentioned Peter Boghossian's book, A Manual mm-hmm. for Creating Atheists. Mm-hmm. Now, I have that book, and I'm, I'm perusing through it, and I notice at the end of the book it has a section called Containment Protocols, where he <laughs> specifically wants um, atheists um, to have the government um, financially cripple um, organizations of faith or religious organizations, and he also wants to remove the religious exemption for faith or religion so that anyone who believes in supernatural things or God or religion will be classified as mentally ill. Do yep. you agree with that? May I? Uh, yes. All right. In, in, in Islamic countries, uh, there are a lot of uh, countries that will take their law directly out of the Quran. Would you like to live in one of those countries? EF. Uh, no, I'm a, I'm a Christian, so I wouldn't want to live there. Okay. Why wouldn't you want to live there as a Christian? Uh, why? Because uh, I think they advocate a false worldview. Okay. Um, any other reason? Maybe violence or lack of opportunity, uh, maybe? Well, I, I think they derive a lot of their ideas uh, from the Quran, which I consider to be false. Okay. But do you agree? Do you agree that all belief in God is a mental illness? Like Peter? Oh no! I'm, 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 you are helping me answer this, and so I'm asking you because I want to yeah. take you on this journey. Mm-hmm. So again, do you think that you would risk violence against you by being a non-Muslim in a country where Sharia law is practiced? Because the answer is yes. Well, I don't understand your question. I don't understand your question. Sure. Um, I, actually, I can tell it to you. Right? If you're not a Muslim in a country where um, you cannot own things or you cannot um, have business or you cannot just operate in society if you don't believe what they believe. Own a Bible, show a cross. And, and okay, yeah, all right. So, so that doesn't address the question. Sure. Do you agree with Peter Boghossian so that why we would use I want the government to yeah. cripple uh, religious organizations in the United States? Yeah, why the heck would I want Sharia law to happen here in the United States? Well, that wasn't my, that's not the question I'm asking you. Peter it's, Boghossian yeah. states no, 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 that no, he no. wants to cripple that all does, religious organizations that, in the country. Do that does answer that? it. That does answer it. And I'll tell you why. Because I don't want to live in a world where I need to be worried about being an atheist. And I don't want people who are non-Christian to live in a world where they're worried about being non-Christians. I have heard so... You live in Texas with us, right? Uh, yeah. I'm okay, how many, peop- how many people have said uh, this is a Christian nation uh, in your church? I know they said it all the time in mine. Well, whether they say that or not... I mean, I, just answer. Do Hold, on. Really? Hold on. Hold yeah. on. Well, do they say that, that this question. is a Christian nation? Yes or no? Some some people do. Okay. I don't. I don't say that. Okay. Now, can, do can you, you see how that the government should be used to financially cripple all religious organizations? I think of an. I think if a religious organization. Here's my direct answer. I think if a religious organization is benefiting from my tax dollars, that needs to stop. I think if you have a okay, club, that would be one thing. Yeah. Hold on. If you have a club, yeah. right? If you have a club or a nonprofit like the ACA maybe, right? We don't take tax dollars. And in fact, we spend that time, we self um, fund things and and we have donations, we've got the YouTube channel. And And we can always use more. (laughs) And we spend a lot of that on helping others, right? We don't need tax money to do that. And would you think that, um... that taking away exemptions from a church is crippling them? Um, because I don't think they deserve or should have to, those exemptions at all. Peter, according to Peter Bezo, uh, Bezo, uh, Bogosian, Bogosian in the containment, yeah, Bogosian, in the uh, containment protocols, in addition to removing tax exemption, he wants the government to use whatever means it can to cr- uh, financially cripple um, faith-based organizations. Sure. Do you agree with that? I think that uh, they enjoy an unfair advantage over everyone else. And they don't deserve it, and I think that. No, I'm not talking about tax exemption. Oh, I'm not. I'm not either. Um, you know that there's a, a law that's has it gone out there, or is it still in uh, being decided whether or not tax dollars about, um, should go toward Trinity building Lutheran churches? No. Or the there's most recent one. the most recent vote that uh, FEMA money for rebuilding things can be 
um, claimed by churches. Yeah, so how building. would you feel about your tax dollars going toward building a mosque anywhere? I'm not, I'm not advocating that. No, I'm but... I'm not advocating tax dollars go he, toward building a mosque or any other religious institution. Cool. However, there is, a, there is, a, there is, a, there is the... Um, like, that's not a tax break. ...in the Constitution. Uh, well, the Constitution states that Congress shall make no law with respect to an establishment of religion. Mm -hmm. um, but I have a, another question right. for you. So, so, well, before so, we move on to a yeah. second question, yeah, um, one I'd just like to address, I think hopefully the point got across that Eric was attempting to give you as close as you can have a view from where we're sitting, which is there is a religion, there is a religious organization, you disagree with it, it wants your tax money, is that okay? Which is, I think we can agree, should the government pass a law respecting the establishment of a religion, based on the, the last point you made, I think we agree that that's not something that we would like our government to do, even yeah. if it was legal, although I don't want to make that assumption. That is where we are. Okay, so now, since you don't believe in God, and, well, no, and no, no. Uh, e we're uh, God... Sorry, yeah. um, e e EF, I, I was trying to figure out, that it, is that where you stand as far as should the government of the United States use its power to promote or in some way establish a religion? Like, I mean, I, I know that that no, is I think, illegal, I think the but... Is pretty, I think yeah. the Constitution is pretty clear that Congress shall make no law with respect to an establishment of religion. I, um, my second question well, is, no, I mean, since you don't to, believe in God, be, can I get to my second question? You answered I, my first one. I, I mean, he a, has Eric, a, Eric did, and I, I know that we okay. tend to, to go on and on, but I... Uh, part of the question I was trying to ask that I think you've answered was if it could be legal, right? If someone said, hey, push this button, you've amended the Constitution, it's legal for the government of the United States to establish Baptist as the official religion of the United States. My kind of question was, in a world where that comported with the law, would you be in favor of a theocracy? No, I, no, I wouldn't. Okay. Um, I wouldn't be in favor. I like the way the Constitution is written. Um, my second question is, yeah. since you, 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 you don't believe in God or you don't think God exists, God could be defined as the ultimacy of reality from which everything else depends and is contingent on. Mm. Since you don't believe in God, what is the ultimacy of reality that makes God unnecessary, that provides you with the ability to think and to reason? So I have two, two uh, prongs I'd, I'd like to approach. One, I'm... The word ultimacy, I think, in that sentence is mm -hmm. interesting, and I'd like to delve into what you mean by it. But two, what I've just heard you say is, if by God I mean this thing that makes all of reality necessary, then what other explanation do you have for how all of this happens, which is a, a fallacious structure of an argument? The, the conclusion no, I, that a proposition no, is I'm true asking, should I'm result asking, from asking, evidence that it is no, true, not from an argument. Question. Okay, I, I'm glad because that, that was in, in, in the in the case in the case that there is a creator God who created all things and everything would be derivative from the creator God, such as, for example, you mentioned the God of the Bible. In the beginning, God created uh, the heavens and the earth. But since you don't believe that, then there must be some other ultimacy of reality that you are contingent and derivative of that allows you to be able to think and to reason. What is the ultimacy of reality that provides you with the capacity to uh, reason? Okay, so I now um, uh, have an understanding of your question and know that I had an understanding of it when I provided my first answer. So I'm going to try and find a different way of communicating my answer to it. So um, when you're using the phrase ultimacy of reality, to condense that, you mean means by which existence exists, along those lines, if I can... No, what, I mean, what is the ultimate nature of reality that everything is contingent and derivative of, okay, so uh, such I, as ourselves, yeah. that so allows I, us to I have, to I have so to, if it's not God, what is it? Okay. Yeah, so the, the structure of your argument is, well, I've given an answer, you don't believe it, that means you no, have to give an, an answer. Argument. Yeah, no, no, what you've just said, you what you've just said is, well, if this answer isn't the answer, what is your answer? If the answer well, isn't the God, case, then provide it, one is effectively what you just said. 
Okay, I'll yeah. try to explain it again to you. Either it is the case that there is a creator God or is not the case that there is a creator God. Yes, and I'll believe that the case is that there is a creator God I, when there's sufficient may evidence. I, finish my I accept may I finish? you've made this effectively the same statement three times and I've understood it and repeated it back to you. Yeah, but now you're you're over talking me now. So that um, does happen on what, this show. What, I do that to Eric more what, than anyone else. Oh, please, what, dude, you have what no is idea. It, what, what is it that exists ultimately that would make a the a creator god concept unnecessary what is the ultimate nature of reality then okay the question that you have just posed in the form of an argument if it's not god then what would it be is not an argument that supports oh it would have to be god i'm not making an argument i'm asking you a question okay so do you understand that in a situation where people don't understand something? For example, I'm not a cosmologist, so I don't know. Okay, so you don't know what the ultimacy of reality is then, is that correct? That is what I just said. Do you know what the ultimacy of reality is? Um, well, since I'm a Christian, uh, I would attribute that to the God of the Bible. However, cool. why do you believe know, that the God of the Bible I, is the may, ultimacy of reality? May I, may, I, may I speak without being overspoken? No. I mean, I, I'm, I'm if, sorry. This is now, this my, is how we do my, this. What, my question, my question for you, um, since you don't know what the ultimacy of reality is that allows you to think and move and breathe and reason, since you don't know what it is. How is it then Jamie that you doesn't. exclude God as a creator God's concept then? Jamie doesn't know. Because there is, ins I have, because I've been presented with insufficient evidence to believe that Allah created the universe or that the universe was created last Thursday or that universe creating pixies believed it. I do not have sufficient evidence to draw any conclusion at the present moment about okay. the answer to that question. Is there a so good reason it, for me to draw a conclusion? about that question or well, good reasons is in it your view is it your view then that it is possible that a creator god exists you'd have to define a creator god uh how about uh a um uh a non-contingent eternal conscious mind that has the power to effectuate the initial conditions of the universe may i is that possible no it's not show me an example of a conscious mind that exists yeah. without a body Okay, why is that not possible? I just asked you. I just told you. I showed you why. To, by, to be by clear, he's that. saying I do not. The the proposition is: Do you conclude that the this statement is true? The statement being, it is possible that a creator god that is in non-contingent the... mind, etc. That okay. along the lines okay. of what so, Matt Slick says, and Eric well, is saying, why, why should I so, come to the conclusion that the proposition? It is possible, is true. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually well, uh, answering well, it by it, addressing. Was it Eric who said it's not possible? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was clarifying in case that's on what on on what grounds, Eric, is it not possible? So, you need to be able to demonstrate a thing before you say it, or else I'm going to say I did, that I didn't. I, I didn't uh, otherwise, I'm going to say, hold I'm on, let me finish. I can say that leprechauns are crawling out of my ass right now, <laughs> and you can't see below the table. Right, so if you can't prove it wrong, then I can just say it, right? Well, you asserted um, a minute ago that it is not possible for a creator God to exist. I said I'd it's like not possible for a possible. mind to exist outside of a body. And how do you know that? Because I have yet to see a single one. Yeah, to be clear, he, he means that okay. based on the evidence, it that, is reasonable to a, conclude that, that, no. Yeah. That's a fallacy. You're appealing to incredulity. The fact that you are, are you using inductive reasoning? Oh, no. Lord. Oh, I, I know. Okay, familiar. hold on. May I finish my statement, please? Yeah, yeah go ahead. I'm not over talking you. No, but this is our right? show, if, so if you, you can get know, used to it, man. Yeah, I know. I know. I know it's your show. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. This, okay. uh, I'm not, this conversation being, I'm, escalated I'm being, really quickly. I'm not being rude. I'm just asking you a question. Sure. Since all the minds, 
since since all the minds that you are familiar or acquainted with operate um, through the medium of a brain, that's inductive reasoning. That does not logically necessitate that therefore all minds that could potentially exist have to operate through a brain. Yeah, black. So that that's a fall that's a, that's a fallacy of using inductive reasoning. It's a fallacy if you conclude ah yes therefore this is the case rather than oh therefore it is reasonable to conclude that this is true yeah. tentatively the same way that so all of basically all of so, the modern human knowledge over the last 200 years has resulted in a greater understanding of the well, physical I'm, world actually, well, that's i'm still not waiting I, I, oh, okay. i'm still waiting yeah. for eric to demonstrate why it's not possible sure. for there to be a creator god if you sure. say that the, the only minds we know of operate through brains that does not logically necessitate through a deductive argument that no uh, immaterial minds can exist. Yeah, so where, why, why in the world would I accept your premise? If I don't well, accept the, the premise, issue. no, it is because it, I said I didn't assert. I, I didn't assert to you that there was. Wait, you so you said, said that there is a creator not, God that exists no, that is is non contingent? No. no, hold on. Okay. Well, well, are we Eric, talking about Eric, the I assertion it, that it's I gave possible? A definition. I gave a definition. Yeah. Now, you asserted that it is not possible for a non-material mind to exist, and I'd like to know why that's not possible. I told you to show me. If I said it poorly, that, I that's, apologize. That's not, okay. If, if I said I, it poorly, I apologize. If, okay, so that's, you're not asserting that it is not possible? I'm saying that I have no reason to accept your premise. Okay. Okay, so are you retracting the statement that it is not I think, I just, possible? I just said it twice. I, 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 yeah. If I said if it I poorly, can, I apologize. Yeah. Is if that I, better? Okay. All right. So, so the que the original question I asked was: Is it possible for a creator God to exist? How would you answer that, Eric? Well, is this in the direct philosophy? Uh, anything is possible type type deal? Like, I'm just uh, are, are, are you? you oh, can you make a sound argument for it? I don't think so. Can you make a valid argument? I'm, I, I'm, sure. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not making an argument. I'm asking you a question about your worldview. Well, Is it possible that a creator God can exist? Sure. It, okay. 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 If so I can jump in here, in, no, right. for a, no, I just meant like, <laughs> I, no. the, the reason that I'm jumping in here is not to provide an argument. It's to sort of like, okay, I think we're coming to a place where we're at a better understanding, and I think we're gonna get a more um, cooperative argument. But just to clarify, so that I'm I'm following this, and the the folks at home are following this, because we've gone in a, a circle and used a lot of terms that are very specific to these kinds of arguments. Um, EF, your, your question was, is it possible that a creator God exists? I'm not sure that you guys had gotten into defining what a creator God would mean. And I Eric, already defined it several minutes ago. Okay. okay. Um, well, that's true. You said, I'm not sure okay. whether you meant a, a mind or the uh, ultimacy of yeah. reality. Um, just so, so that we're all on the same. Do you agree that it is pot? So both of you, do both of you agree that it is possible for by, a creator God to exist? By your definition? I'm talking about a creator God concept. Yes. Is that possible? Define a creator God that? concept. I just did. Okay. I, do it again, I, please. I, I think he means I because you've a, provided a non, two a definitions. A non-material, non non-contingent, non uh, e eternal mind that has the power to effectuate the initial conditions of the universe. Is okay. that possible? If I were to evaluate the statement, a non-material object, right? Unless we're talking about... Um, metacognition, unless we're talking about numbers, unless we're talking about things that we have defined to be able to talk to each other, I don't think that they exist in the same way that you and I exist. Right? Is it and, possible? And, hold on. Do you want me to answer it or are you looking for a soundbite? Because I'm answering your question. Oh, okay. I wasn't really hearing a direct answer though. Okay. So I am taking each piece of your definition and I'm breaking it down because I don't think that it stands up to scrutiny when it is broken down. I think it needs to be in one big piece and I think you need to say answer yes or no for it to even slightly possibly maybe hold water.
And so I'm taking each piece, we're going to bite size it out, and I'm going to show you that there is not a time where I am going to say, where there's not a time where I'm going to accept any of those premises, right? Or most of those premises, at least, because I well, that's not, have that's no not reason. My I, I have no reason I to accept. I didn't ask you if you accepted it. Well, I didn't well, ask you that question. Okay, then I, I reject your possible. premises. I reject your premise. I did. Is it possible that a creator God exists? I really, uh, that's like saying, does blue, orange, tomato. If we're not going to talk no, about it, what it means, fact, if we're not going to address yeah, the premises, I, I already defined, then it's word salad. I already defined, I already defined the, the, the word God to you twice. Yes, and as soon as I started to talk about the characteristics that you gave it, all of a sudden, no, we're not talking about the, the greater question, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, is it possible that there is a mind that is non-contingent? Yeah. Is that possible that a mind like that could have the power to effectuate the initial conditions of the universe? Is that possible in your view, or is it impossible? Okay. The, to be clear, if sorry, we were that's talking, not a dichotomy. Well, do you believe that it is possible, or do you not hold that belief? Sorry, just, just. No, I mean, actually, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So just it's, it's a, throwing it's, out the it's one. It's a logical dichotomy. It's a logical dichotomy. Either A is the case, or A is not the case. No. Yes. Either but, it is hold the on. case no. that a creator God exists, or it is not the case that a creator yes, God exists. Yes, but your question is, do you believe this? And is it or possible? Or is it not no, true I, I that you believe? No, I didn't ask you. No, the belief, sorry. The belief is. I said, no, no, no. The can belief a, can, is can no, I, because you I won't listen and this No, okay. I I there is a miscommunication here that has been repeated three times. And I'm sorry, because it, it's not one that's been addressed, it's just people talking past each other. The belief that I just referred to, because it's confusing, because usually that means a belief in the God or that it's possible. What I mean is the belief that it is possible is what I was referring to. So if you ask, yeah, oh, I, do you believe that it's possible? I whether you believe in God. I think that's clear. Yes, but you asked whether, whether he I'm believes that it's you, possible. Is it possible? Yes, is okay. it possible that's a belief. That a creator God can exist? Okay, are you asking to be Eric clear, that's or are you a belief? asking Jamie? Or you, are you asking he's Eric he's asking Jamie? you. I, I keep jumping in. Yeah, you are. That's, that's, that's okay. It's that's a possibility. Way. Okay. If we were looking at this logically, I would need to determine that by taking a look at each characteristic that you listed. Do you understand that? Okay, yeah, we have minds and we have non-contingency. Can a uh, non No, 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 we, we also talked exist. about the beginnings of the universe too, right? Setting up conditions, no, so we would need to I, also include the power a, to do that. That, right? that was a, that's right, that's yeah, right. That's, it, I don't yeah. understand why this question is so difficult for you. Is it impossible or possible that a creator God can exist? You, wait, that is a false dichotomy by definition. You do realize that. Rephrase, I think, you, uh, I think you're saying it for uh, Actually, me. according to the law of non-contradiction, the yes. law of excluded middle, A cannot equal not A, and something is either A or it's not A. Right. It's not I a could, logical I dichotomy. Give you a, may, I, may I, okay, I'd like to finish my statement without being overspoken. It's yeah, you, you, you might either, get that, you might not. Either it is. If you don't like it, I'll, then I'll, tough, dude. I'll, what, well, it's not that I don't like it, it's that when you're over-talking me, I can't get my point out. Go ahead. Now, either, either it is the case that there is a creator God, or it is not the case that there is a creator God. That is a logical dichotomy. There is no third option. So I'm asking both of you, is it possible or impossible for a creator God to exist? Okay, I, I already said So, yes. to be clear, the statement that he's making and that I've made about the dichotomy is not oh, there is a third possible uh, option. Because asking a person, hey, what is the answer to this question, is not the same as determining the answer to that question. One so, of those two things is true. However, what conclusion is drawn about either point of that logical dichotomy is a okay. different question. So it's, do I, you accept uh, A, as factual, or do you accept not A as factual? And the answer can be neither, because the question that is asked in that instance is, um, what is your position? You're asking Eric's position. No, I didn't, no. And I he's didn't saying, ask you if A or not A were true. I didn't ask you that question. I said, you did. is it, okay, which, which possibility do you think it is? Do you think it is possible that a creator God exists? 
or do you think it's possible, impossible? I didn't ask you which actual world is the case. Yeah. I said, is it no, I, is I, a creator God impossible in your worldview, or is sure. it possible? For people, and I'm, I'm going to spell this out for people who are watching, not for you, EF. Um, uh, in philosophy. Yes to what? Yes to what? Yes to what? No, he said EF. EF. Sorry, just... Oh, I, oh, I'm sorry. No. I yeah, it, that's fine. We, that, both of our, we, our bloods yeah. are up. That's all yeah. right. I get it. Yeah, we're getting um, a little heated. So, in philosophy, anything is possible um, as long as you can, as long as you can present a valid argument and within its own little sphere, if it holds up, then yeah, you can accept it. But then you need to judge whether or not it's true. You know, you need to check the soundness of that. And so if I'm so determining you, the validity of it, right, is it possible that a creator God exists that has to be somewhere on the line of anything can exist until we start to define things? So, yes. Okay, so... Now, yeah. you, you asked me to then take a look at your definition of a creator God because now that we're defining it, now I can piece it out and I can determine whether or not... I accept the different premises because you didn't say that your creator God has one characteristic. You listed three, right? And so I'm taking a look at all three. And if I don't agree or won't accept one of those, then I can toss out the whole fucking thing. Right? Okay, so, so you're, is your atheism because there is a, an insufficiency of a rational justification for the existence of God? Yes! Oh my gosh, yes! We need like a, okay. a, a okay. buzzer Bingo. or something. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, now... now you since, win the since, best caller since prize. You, since, since you withhold belief in God because there's no rational justification, your capacity to reason to that effect would okay. depend on that there that there is causality, laws of nature, and laws of logic. Do those exist, and do you have a rational justification for them? Okay, that is that. I love that we moved into this place. That's fantastic. Yeah. I'm so glad you made it here with us. Okay, so do I need to justify morality to be able to act within it? I think I is didn't the, ask you about. He, oh no 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 no. I know. He's I know. giving but another example. I'm I'm actually bringing to the table what I have. Because do the laws I don't have logic, I don't have do everything laws, worked is out. There a ra right. A, well, well. Let me repeat the question because okay. I think you're confusing my question with the issue of morality. I didn't okay. invoke morality. Br br said, bring it up in small you, sections. You, then. Right. Since you're 100%. employing reason to evaluate whether or not God exists, reason would depend on the nature of reality, which would be causality, laws of nature, and that there would be laws of logic. Okay. Since your criterion for belief or non-belief in God is whether or not it's rationally justified, as an atheist, do you have a rational justification that there is causality, laws of nature, and laws of logic? Um, I really don't think I have a choice in that, do I? We kind of defined all of them. Like, do you have a rational justification for any one of those three? So, that's like saying, do I have a rational justification for numbers? We use those things to be able to describe other things. So, yeah. if we're going to talk about the definitions of them, we can talk about the definitions. But if you're talking about, Just, like, what are numbers? How do you know numbers number? I, I, no. I, I don't know. You're, you're, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't mention numbers. I, no, I, I didn't did. mention numbers. I didn't mention morality. I asked you if causality and laws of nature and the laws of logic exist. That would be necessary prerequisites for you to reason and to reason that there is no God. So, do you have a rational justification for Hold laws on. of logic and that there's causality in nature? Okay, I, I, I reject your your statement again. I, I reject the it's not argument. A statement, it's a question. No, you, a you, question. you defined things in a way that I don't agree with, and so I can't proceed. What the, what, I, didn't give you, I didn't give you a definition. You did. You said that I need to believe in these things to be able to reason, right? No, I didn't say, I didn't say that. You're okay. not listening. No, you I can go back and listen would, to the recording. May I finish my statement? I will. I didn't. I didn't say you had to believe in them. I said they are necessary prerequisites for reason. Okay. It's very simple. I'm sorry. Is that's the same thing that he just said. Causality? Can I finish my statement to him, please? Will you listen uh, when we is, speak? Is, is, is causality the laws of nature and the laws of logic? Are they necessary prerequisites for you to reason and reason as an atheist? No. 
They result oh, from the law, they the, result the, from interacting the with the world as it can possibly necessary. be perceived, right. and are definitions of emergent properties of reality as best we can perceive it. So, so the fundamental the underpinnings is reason? the way that we interact with the world. The next step okay. that you have you, to take this chain backwards is to propose hard solipsism. Okay, I asked you, do you have a justification that there are laws of logic? Because the laws Reality. of logic have to be... May I finish, please? Yes. The laws of logic would be a necessary prerequisite for reason and to be able to reason as an atheist. The laws of logic would be defined as absolute and universal. Do you have a rational justification that the laws of logic exist as an atheist? Okay, so un unless you're saying, ooh, there's an ether that exists outside of the universe thing, unless that's what you mean, then the answer is yes. I'm waiting to hear a rational justification that the laws of logic human beings. exist to permit you. Human beings. No, the, the laws of logic are not human beings. The laws of that logic. wasn't okay. what I was Hold saying. Can I finish my statement, yeah. please? Uh, EF, you you need to listen to him fully. Yeah. If you're gonna sit here on your high well, horse I and say, listening. I, you know, you need to. Yeah. You're, I'm, not you're... Being, I'm not being on my high horse. <laughs> listen back to the recording afterward, Jamie. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, oh, I will. Yeah. Then you'll refine the way you use the Jamie, script. Go ahead. So the laws of logic are not synonymous with human beings. The laws. Okay, of logic that's not a thing I said. Yeah, no, you cut into that's, him, that's and not so a that's thing why I said. you didn't hear it. My, my understanding, uh, as I as I remember it, was that earlier in this conversation, you said that you weren't over talking us. Um, I think that that's changed because the temperature of this conversation has heated up. Um, and I, I'm, I'm still waiting for an answer. Well, that's a good way of cooling this uh, temperature down. But no, no. Well. So my answer to the question again begins with an explanation from the foundation. So the first two words of my answer are not going to entirely explain it, and those first two words of my answer that is more than a single sentence are human beings experience reality and attempt to explain it. Logic, foundations of reason, numbers that describe properties of existence as we perceive it, those are definitions to concepts and ideas that we observe and understand by interacting with reality. Can you observe the laws of logic? I can observe reality and see whether or not a suggestion about how it works uh, comports with reality. So in that way, yes. Well, but you see, uh, the laws of logic are defined as being absolute and universal. Can you make an observation of anything Logically. that's absolute and universal? Yeah, one. No, I said, can you observe something that is absolute and universal? To be clear, okay, are, are you talking about anything? Are you asking can, about absolute certainty? Well, since, if, since he invoked that he could observe, I'm asking you, how do you observe the laws of logic when they are abstract, absolute, universal abstractions? When you make an observation, that's of particulars, not of universals. How do you observe that something is universal when you only observe a tiny subset of particulars? You test it. You test it until it doesn't no. work. No. And then when it doesn't work, okay, te then... Testing only deals with observation of particulars, not universals. Okay, what? Rules what of logic reason? only describe things that exist. So testing reality, logic... testing the things that exist is how we determine what the laws of logic are. See, now you're getting no, the laws of The laws of logic are that for any entity, that all entities that exist within the universe, they always equal themselves and they can never equal their negations. Can you observe that the laws of logic hold for all entities? Um, so far, so yes. good. I mean, I'm not a hard Wait. solipsist, so I can't say for absolute I'm certainty anything. I'm not discussing anything. solipsism. Okay, then... I'm not discussing solipsism. Then to the best I'm ability asking. that we I can, are, yes. we brought it up. Sometimes when we give an you answer, we me, bring up more information. You told me you could observe the laws of logic. The laws of logic are just 
defined as being universal and absolute okay. in terms of... Do you remember the, the other parts of my answer to that question when the entire preamble to that for an entire paragraph was an explanation of the statement? Yeah, you're only referring to a tiny subset of your sense experience within the domain of the entire uh, universe, but you don't observe the uh, entire universe. So how do you know that the laws of logic are in fact universal? I, okay, that's, that's just flatly dishonest. I'm sorry, you need to take a look at what you're saying and you need to reevaluate it because you just kicked out examples that he was using because they didn't address everything all at once. And I can't think no, the reason of, why I, I mean, unless he comes up with a universal field theory right now, then there's not a single thing, not in the great big scope and not, in, not when you're talking about minutia, are you going to be able to address everything all the time. We do the best we can. And let me give you a personal example from myself that can help illustrate this, okay? Are you ready? I'm gonna talk about something that is related. Yes? Fantastic. We talked about ethics and morality. And ethics and morality is something that people have called in about. And why do you do this? And how do you justify it? And I honestly didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know why I was okay. I know I'm gonna bring it up and I hate myself for it. Vegans. Why I eat meat and don't, don't feel terrible about it. Uh, don't, don't, don't feel terrible about it. And <laughs> Did I need to justify it to myself as a child when I didn't know? No. But do I need to be able to make more sense of the world around me? Yes, and these are tools that I use to do that. Right? Okay, are you using inductive reasoning to justify the universality of the laws of logic? Are, okay, give me an example of a way that doesn't do that, please. Inductive reasoning will make an observation yeah, of, of a Answer small me. Subset answer my question instead of talking whole. over and, and, and changing it. I'm giving answer you. I'm give giving me you an, an example. I'm, gi I'm giving you an example okay. of what the nature of inductive reasoning. No, I want you to give me an example. Of, I am attempting to answer you, and you're over talking me. It, it, as long as you're not going to answer the question, reason. I'm going to interrupt you. That's the third. That's the third time I'm attempting to answer you. Now, I'm done. an example of inductive reasoning. Damn. That's the fourth time I'm trying to answer you. Now, an example of inductive reasoning is to make a partial uh, observation of a subset of the whole, and then generalizing based upon that subset that the whole conforms to the subset. I observe a hundred swans and they're always white. If somebody therefore reasons all swans are white, that would be an example of inductive reasoning. So you cannot logically necessitate that all swans are white by observing a subset that is all white. Now, since you observe certain consistencies within your observation and sense experience, that doesn't logically necessitate that the laws of logic are true at all times and all places. So I'm asking you as an atheist, how do you justify that the laws of logic are absolute and universal? Because if you don't, you you're not going to be able to, to, to justify that you can reason as an atheist. Hmm? So do you have a justification um, that the laws I, I of logic are absolutely I, I, universal? Okay. Um, so other here, than the here's, one we've already said, where here's where I'm at. Um, I try to be open and honest about the best ways that I can determine things. Right. As soon as I give you my experience, um, I, that's the best that we can do. So my question so you, to you is unrelated because I can't give you the answer that you don't you don't have a justification for the laws of logic then. Not one that's going to satisfy your definition, dude. I'm looking. I, I didn't ask for a definition. I said, do you have no, any justification? That Holy the laws shit! Of logic are you serious? Are absolute universal. Okay. Hold on. I yeah, gave I you my yeah, answer. I, I gave you my answer, and you said no. By this definition, it doesn't work. And then I said, no. Okay. By your definition, I don't have a good answer. And you said, I didn't give a fucking definition. Are you kidding? Now, now, now it's my turn. Now I'm going to take this, and you can either. You're on hold. All right. <laughs> I'm tired of this. I'm so fucking tired of people being able to come in and give that bullshit. All yeah, right, and Buzzword let me tell you City. why. Let me tell you why it's bullshit. I'm going to tell you why. Let's let's bring the camera in. Let's do this. All right. Are we ready? Give are we ready? Yeah. Come on. Let's bring it. 
all right, it is bullshit when you wanna come in and try and give people this idea that they need to come up with, an, uh, with a perfect reasoning for everything in their lives when the fact is, is that we're human, that this is the human experience yeah. and that we are at best trying to reason our way through it. And as human beings, that's all we have, but that's okay. We come up with laws, we come up with rules, we come up with theories so that we can better explain the world around us. But without us, those things don't exist, right? We have the laws of logic and to the best of our ability, we've been able to see that it works, right? We can justify that it works in that every time that we've used it, it has worked and if it doesn't, then the, the better thing to do is not use it anymore. That's fine. But if you're gonna come in and say, you need to justify it, then what you are doing is implying that you do have that answer. That is a presuppositional argument. What you're doing is you're making a special example for yourself when you're not, making, when you're not addressing the point. I have the answer, and so you know what? I just do because my imaginary friend says so. That's way less authentic, that's way less it doesn't answer anything because it doesn't have predictive power. It doesn't have the ability to test it in other places. I do because I said so doesn't really answer anything. And so if you don't like the answer, then fucking welcome to the human condition. We all have it. He's on, uh, he's on hold still. No. Too. Fuck this guy. Next call. All right. Before you jump on the next one. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Vern, watch the, watch the levels a little bit. There it is. Okay. That wasn't into the mics or too much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the ability of human beings to understand reality is limited. It's, it's Matt Slick's fucking argument. I, to, be con to be quite honest, Matt Slick has a website. You've got to put an MA on this episode now. You know that, right? Oh, yeah. Wait, no, yeah. that's for video games. Oh, is this a? Is there an interactive version? No, or, never mind. Oh no, 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 um, no. I mean, mature content warning. If we're putting this out as a podcast. Yeah, no, I know, I know. Anyway, what, go ahead. You know, whatever. Um, well, I mean, were we afraid of that before? Should I not be saying fuck and shit and damn? No. Poor bastard. But, eh. Slut. Keep talking, dude. I gotta breathe. Shit. Crap. All right, you're done talking. <laughs> Um, so no, 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 no. I, like, th this is exactly like Matt Slick talking points with slightly different buzzwords from time to time. Actually, at the end there, when he was like, oh, I didn't ask you for a definition, that's like creationist hearing impaired syndrome of I heard one word in your answer and so I'm going to run with it. Um, but the like, oh, the, you can't understand things because you've admitted that your understanding of things is just, in Matt Slick's words, your brain fizzing, which is a bad description of it because fizzing is like bubbles coming out of a liquid as opposed to synapses firing, so it should be your brain sparking. And then he goes, but I don't have that problem because Jesus. It's the weakest piece of bullshit ever. It's a, a trip into Buzzword City. All right. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to help. I deeply appreciate yeah. you, and I'm so sorry yeah. for cutting you no, through. No, no, just, no, no, no. There, do, no and, apologies, and bruh. That's why we're her. Yeah, really. Um, I can speak English. <laughs> if, if people want to come in with apologetics, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But don't bring that weak-ass shit in our house. <laughs> <laughs> you meet people where they're at. If you're going to sit there and just not talk to the person, instead you're talking at the person, then there's no reason to have you in the room. I actually listened to you. You wouldn't give your name, and I listened to you. And then it turned out that you didn't want to actually converse, you didn't want to bring up point and counterpoint, you didn't want to, um, you don't need to humanize it, but I did. I did because I am a human, and we're almost out of time, and he we have to He didn't ask calls. for a point counterpoint, so therefore you lose. Yeah, what the fuck ever.